Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial episode to make you understand I2C like a pro. Please remember to give a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this tutorial. I will briefly talk about some of the characteristics, structure and functionality, protocol, and of course, we will see a live demo with more practical explanations to solidify your knowledge. I2C or I2C was invented by Philips Semiconductor, now NXP Semiconductors, in 1982. It is a synchronous multi-master, multi-slave, serial two-wire bus protocol. The two wires are SDA. That's for serial data and SCL for serial clock. Used to attach low speed peripheral to microcontrollers. One of the largest benefits is that it requires only two wires compared to other interfaces. Each slave node has a unique address with which the master can initiate communication. The example image shows a typical I2C cluster. Every I2C node has an open drain buffer on each of its wire. It is achieved with a single transistor that pulls the SCL or SDA line to ground when voltage greater than the threshold is applied to the transistor. The transistor floats when no voltage is applied to the base. In this case, the line is pulled high by the pull-up resistor, which is the default bus, bus state. The size of the pull-up resistor is determined by the bus capacitance. The whole protocol, as we shall see in the next slides, is based on this structure. The whole protocol is better explained with read and write accesses. The master can either read I2C address values from slave or even write them to configure the slave. Every access starts with the master sending a start signal and then followed by one or more bytes, each of which has to be acknowledged by the slave to, sig to signify successful reception. Every communication is terminated by the master with a stop signal. Start and stop signals are needed for every communication. The start condition on the bus is a high to low transition on the SDA line when the SCA line is too high. A stop condition is a low to high transition on the SDA line when the SCA line is high. Each bit on the SDA line is asserted on when the SCA changes from low to high. Each byte of data must be acknowledged or not acknowledged by the receiver to signal successful or failed transmission. A byte can be a device address, register address, data written or read from a slave. Acknowledge is sent by a receiver by pulling the SDA line low during the low phase of the acknowledge or not acknowledge clock period. This assures stability during the accession period of the SDA line, which is the low to high phase on the clock line. Not acknowledge occurs when the receiver let the SDA line to float and be pulled high. Writing and reading becomes very easy to understand once you have understood start, stop, acknowledge, and not acknowledge. Of course, writing starts with a start bit, followed by the slave address coded in the first seven most significant bits plus a read-write bit to indicate a write access. Then after, the master releases the SDA line for the slave to acknowledge the byte. After acknowledgement, the slave releases the SDA line for the master. Take note that releasing means the SDA line becomes high, which is the default level because the open drain collector of the node let it float so that the pull-up resistor pulls it high. After slave acknowledges, the master sends the slave address to be written, which is also acknowledged. After that, the master then sends the data to be written which is also acknowledged by the slave. At the end, the master sends a stop bit to end the communication. Reading a slave address is similar to writing for the first two byte transfer. After the slave acknowledges the slave address sent, the master sends a second start signal, the repeated start with a slave address again, but this time sets the read-write bit to 1 to indicate read. Then the slave acknowledges the send 
and send the content of the register which will be acknowledged by the master except the last byte which the master does not acknowledge to force the slaves to release the SDA line so that the master can send a stop beat. Okay, enough of all the theory. Let's try to see this on a hardware. Okay, I've set up my, my, my platform. I'm using TSOC 6 now, as you can see. I have updated my whole software from TSOC 4 to TSOC 6. There's a new one that just came out. It's a multi-core. It has dual core, Cortex M4 and M0. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fast. So um, I had to do uh, uh, um, some tweaking with my I2C. That's why I decided to make this video. Actually, I should be doing videos on EMVs, but I thought maybe this one is really, really important. So you all know my hardware. If you've been following my videos, I have this uh, LCD that I always use to display some information. And um, it's an I2C LCD. So in this case, I will be showing you only the writing. I won't be reading because um, it doesn't permit me. I don't have any other peripheral, I2C peripheral to read. But um, yeah, it will be enough to show you on this one. Okay, um, I've set up everything. This is uh, the simulation that I make. I'm just gonna, I've reset everything and I have a breakpoint here. So I'm gonna let it run and then you're gonna see how it is measured. And I'm gonna show you the things that I just explained in the theory part. Okay, let me take this to another window. Um, I'm gonna press start and then I let it run. Okay, now we have our trace. This is it. And um, the the uh, slave address of my LCD screen is um, 27 hex. As you can see here, first, um, for example, in this writing part, this is a start signal. So the start signal is when the clock at the beginning is still high and then the SDA line goes from high to low. So this is the start. And as I said, also every bit is asserted when the clock signal goes from low to high. So this is one part, this is the other one, this is the other one. And now you notice that my address is sent in to the first seven most significant bit. So it's just like um, having 27 and then push it one bit to the left. That's why it gives you four E. And uh, the right byte is at the end, it, the right bit is at the end, it's a zero. That's why you have four E. So you can do the math and you see it. And then the, you see for every byte sent, there is an acknowledgement from the slave. So after this first byte was sent, the data that has to be written was sent. Same thing everywhere. So you always see the, 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 the write and the address with the acknowledgement and then the next byte with the acknowledgement. So that is exactly how it goes. Unfortunately, I don't have any other peripheral where I can actually read bytes from the slave, I would have showed you. But I hope you understood everything. If not, place your question uh, below and I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you very much.